today I want to have a little playtime with rice paper. Um, I have mentioned this before, one of my longtime uh, viewers, subscribers, has left a comment about the Gansai Tambi watercolors working well on, um, I'm thinking actually, let's see these in four, um, on rice paper. And so, oh, that wasn't great, was it? I don't think they tear well on the across side. Anyway, um, yeah, so I have a little play time, or had a little play time, in my um, other session. <laughs> so I've created this paper and it looks so, so beautiful. I love the crinkle that it has. Um, and it's just kind of nice. I mean, you can cut out things, you can create collages or you can stick them like that in your sketchbook, whichever way you want. I have a little basket where I just keep these. Um, so, I bought my rice paper off Amazon and this is what it looked like. I got two packs like that and it was a set. Um, I don't remember how many sheets it has in here, but it will last you a while. Mine also came with this rubbish brush. I thought it's a... I didn't know, but said that the quality isn't great, so I was excited to try this brush, but it sheds and it's just not great quality at all. I don't know what hair this is. I would assume it's goat's hair, but it was very cheap to be real hair, so maybe it's synthetic. So the rice paper has two sides. One is smooth and one is has a bit of a texture to it. So I gather that you paint on the one that has the, uh, the texture. <clears throat> so here, let's just do a little bit of painting. I'm going to also squeeze out some of the Schmincke's gold to add um, to today's color. So the binder has separated a little bit here, but what I would urge you to to do is actually take a little spatula knife. I'm trying to find mine. Where is my spatula knife? Oh no, I just snipped it off. Right, well that came to an end. Okay, I'm going to use this one here. <clears throat> um, I see a lot of uh, people throw out the binder when you squeeze out the watercolors. Please don't because that will change the structure of the color, I find. And I, you know, so whatever has been put into that tube has been created to that recipe of the ingredients. And if it has separated, it doesn't mean that it's not needed. It just might have separated from sitting there. So put it back into the paint just by mixing it up and you'll have that perfect, um, you know, original consistency of the paint that was supposed to be. Because if you take that binder out, it will be a different um, consistency thing. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so just a little tip there. Okay, so these paints are remarkable. But one thing is... Um, is pre-wetting them. They like a lot of moisture. These paints don't work very well when there is not enough moisture. So I'd say spray water and let it sit. I have this tray that I'm working on and you might wonder why but rice paper is very thin and if you use rice paper with traditional watercolors, um, which Gansai Tambi are not, then they leak straight through and create a, a mess. Now, I had also a bit of a mess here, but I was experimenting with the synthetic ox skull yesterday, just being curious of how it would work uh, with the Gonzai Tambis. And I felt that as soon as I added the synthetic gall to it, the, the watercolor started leaking through uh, the paper, but before that when I did a swatch it did not. So I want to experiment again today without the um, ox skull this time. Okay, 
So, here is the thing. I am so obsessed with this watercolor set, which I'm really actually surprised because I did the original video where I just watched this uh, palette out and yeah, it was pretty and all, but I wasn't that impressed. But now, when I started playing with it, the more I played, the more I experimented, the more doors it sort of started opening for me. And I am really, really impressed. So, the main factor in why I'm being so impressed is actually when you look at the colors, they're very interesting. I mean, I haven't seen a watercolor put up with these colors and obviously it's inspired by the 70s um, diner, I suppose. And the colors are fantastic. So they're really beautiful to use on their own. Um, color palette is just really pretty, but it's also quite unusual to have two blues, two grays, uh, three yellows and one red. But when you start mixing with them, and the key is don't mix on the paper, they don't mix very well in my opinion, but mix it in like a little separate tray. Um, the colors that you can get from mixing amongst these eight colors is pretty impressive. So whoever put this color palette, I wonder whether they had it in mind and they knew exactly what they did, or it just happened by, you know, an incident, but it really is pretty. The colors you can get here, um, if you love teals, this is the palette for you because you can create so many beautiful teals, it's just mind-blowing. Um, there's something about this very pastel blue um, that, you know, you're not going to get, look at that, can you see how I'm now taking it to that perfect minty color? You're not going to get this color um, in like conventional watercolors. Maybe a little bit of horizon blue is similar, but still not as milky as this one. Having white in your watercolors really helps to create uh, teals, perfect teal mixtures. Also, these two colors are fantastic. You might not think of it at first, but... I have discovered that they are great white substitute. It's like a tinted white. So one is a cool tone tinted and the other one, they are gray, but technically I'm saying they feel like, should I matching my nails this color? Uh, and the warm toned gray, use them in place of white and you will get such pretty mixes. Last night I discovered that you can get the prettiest pinks with you using this uh, pink here, like a raspberry pink, which is very intense and bright, mixing them with one of those, beautiful, just stunning. So I feel like I want to show you a lot more. So here we go. You can see it has gone kind of like ghosted through the other side, but there is no nothing wet here. It hasn't gone through. Whereas if I would have used, um, in fact, I'll show you here, you can see, it was such a wet puddle, it completely licked through to the other side. Um, so that was the difference. And let's see if I add a bit of grey now to this mix. The amount of different hues and tones of teals that this palette allows me to create is just unbelievable. I could sit here and play forever. So let's just add a little bit more of that. <clears throat> so that's two blue. So what I'm gonna do is mix in a touch of yellow. And this time I'm going to go into this milky yellow. And look at that, we get a new tone. <clears throat> and let's try the warm gray. So you see it's like a white, but it has a tone to it. So there you go, that's a pretty color.
All right, so now I wanna try and create a bit of gold splutters if I can. There we go. That's my husband singing there. How pretty is that? Okay, so let's look at this pretty stuff. So you see, as soon as I started adding the other watercolor, it really leaks through. So there must be some sort of agent in the Ganzai Tambi that makes them stay. But how pretty is that? It's just so, so pretty. I mean, you could try and find similar watercolors um, to be creating this. You could, you know, go ahead and um, use a white instead of these, but you'll have to work a lot harder. You'll have to mix in other colors to create a little tint to the white because this is already done for me. So I've got these three colors here, which have a lot of white in them. So the cool tone gray, the pale blue and the warm toned gray, they um, are just beautiful. And in fact, this one, which has loads of white in here as well, um, the pastel yellow. So those four colors give me such a quick uh, way of creating teal. Um, with these two. So these two are the main colors to get me started. The kind of tailor blue with the ochre yellow. And then when I start adding one of the other fours, that's when I get loads and loads of different varieties of a teal color right here. And um, yeah, just love it. So the pink that I have created by just an accident yesterday and I was like mind blown is a little bit of this pink you can see here so I'll try to go ahead and do that let's do it on this so for that let's go into this clean pan here I'm going to add so this had a little bit of that premix already there. So let's see. Let's go in with this color first. That's all right, but not my favorite. So for that, I'm going to go now into this cool toned gray. So you can create these beautiful dirty colors which you can't do with white is what I tried to say before. Look at that. How beautiful is this color? If you just used white, you would have like a whiter version of that, but you wouldn't get to this. So you would need to use another color and tiny little bit of it to get the perfect mix. So look at this now. How pretty is this color? Now, if I add a touch of yellow, I'm starting to get that kind of warmer color. Look at this beautiful color. Let's see if I can make a bit of a peach. So I'm going to go into warm yellow now. And that's a little bit too yellow, so to that I will add a bit of that pink, but a little, because it does go very quickly into that. So that's, that's a nice peach. There we go. Beautiful little peach. And then let's go a bit into the warm grey lighten it up slightly 
And now we have a lighter shade of it. Let's see what happens if we go into the cool grey. That's a bit too grey, so again I'm going to add, let's go for the ochre. And then into that a touch of pink. Just a little, this might be much, but anyway. So we're back to that similar peach that I did here, but I want it to be a bit more lighter. So I think I'm going to go into this pale yellow. That's good. Yeah. So you can see it's a bit different to this color if I swatch it next to. <clears throat> And let's see if I just add a tiny bit more of this brighter yellow into here. They mix beautifully, but the key to mixing them is on a tray, not on paper. They don't flow very nicely into one another. Okay, so I had a little break, uh, which um, one of the doctors called me back about some uh, ultrasound results. Um, and then my husband was singing Rihanna's song. And then I had to call regarding a parcel force. So one thing <laughs> led to another and uh, I forgot to film this bit. So I was talking to myself while filming it. Let me start again. So... I was just showing you this. I don't know if I'm going to keep this clip or or not. Um, but I really love this color. Like, actually, all the colors are mixed here except for this one. And things like that, color-wise, they really, really um, affect me in such a way that I have to have a harmonious color situation. If, if there is a color that's clashing, it really will not do for me. So... You can see like this is my happiness, like it makes me really happy, all the colors together and then clash. So this is why I decided to start again and of course I didn't film this bit. Now I'm trying to think how I mix this color, so it's really really pretty. Um, so I'm trying to get there but meanwhile I'm also mixing all these colors. So basically what I'm doing here with mixing these peaches and pinks is predominantly using this pink, all three of the yellows and these two greys. So except for the two blues basically. Um, and I'm getting a variety of colors. And I wonder if I'm going to add some of this cool toned gray. I think I'm getting closer now. This is a bit too gray, but you can see, whoop, this is the color I'm trying to get, so I think this might be a bit too too dirty. Yeah, it needs a tiny little bit touch of a, that pink. A little bit more. There we go, I think now we're almost there. I will let it dry and see, I think this is close enough to that color. If not, I can try to cool it down a little bit more and then add a bit more of that pink because it looks a little bit too warm. So that's where the cool tone gray and the warm tone gray come in pretty handy. So this is now taking it a bit too pinky now, but still nice color, so I'm going to swatch it off, yeah. <clears throat> swatch it out, rather. Very pretty pink. Gorgeous. So let's have a look. If we add to neutralize it now, let's add a bit of this warm gray. Hasn't changed it too much. So 
I'm going to add a tiny little bit of this yellow. Not so pretty, so then let's try getting back into that pink. This pink is very strong, so a tiny little bit of it goes into this stronger colour. Look, that's quite pretty. Yeah, I think this is now fairly close to that colour. Once it dries, maybe it will be a lot more sim similar. So I'm really happy with these colours. And those are my favourite. You could mix a lot more different colours. But the peaches and the turquoises. Oh, hold on. I need the gold. I need the gold. So I'm just going to mix it up. And then just do some of these splashes. Thing. I'm just gonna wash this one out a bit too much in the middle there so <clears throat> there we go a bit of a triangle and that's it these are pleasure to work with except for you see when you start adding any other colors like the gold and just go in with the water rather than a mix of the watercolor it's like as if the watercolour has some sort of a shield to it where it doesn't penetrate the colour fully and doesn't create this mass. So that's why it's good to work on a tray just in case you start doing these things. So it's still a little bit damp but at least I have taken care of most of the texture. So how pretty is that? Very subtle colours. I mean would you have thought that you can create that with this palette? But that's why the two greys are in there. That's what I realized. So here are my two favorite color palettes. Can we just adore them? Gorgeous. <laughs> so, so pretty. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little playful video. And maybe you'll look through some of your existing watercolors that you can create it with. But um, to be honest with you, I, I think... The two colors that I was least excited about, these two grays, the cool tone and the warm tone, they ended up being so helpful and so useful in creating these beautiful pastel pale colors and um, adding a little bit of that kind of mutedness to it. Gorgeous, absolutely love it. So thanks for watching and see you soon.